Um, not everyone realizes hedging. Hedging sometimes loses money, and that's fine. Like that can happen. <coughs> Airlines hedge. Um, so this this happened about four years ago. Two Qantas executives at the center of an investigation into multi-million dollar fuel hedging losses in Vietnam have been allowed to return to Australia. Um, so they detained them shortly and then prevented them from leaving. The, the, nah, the pair were barred from leaving Vietnam while authorities investigated $31 million in fuel hedging losses in 2008 um, at the Vietnamese arm of Jetstar, of Qantas's, of Jetstar Pacific. Now, that's, I don't think, I don't know if they go into detail of what the hedge was, but if it was jet fuel hedging, they made, they were concerned that the fact they're going to buy things in the future, that fuel prices were going to go up. And so they took out a hedge position to minimize that risk. Turns out fuel prices went down. So they were actually better off if they didn't hedge. So the hedge position lost money. And I don't really know corporate law in Vietnam, but from what I read, it was, if you've done something that intentionally loses profit, then you can end up in trouble from the corporation's law over there. And that's what they got help. That's what the concern was, is because they actually entered into a transaction which ended up losing money. Um, but that's what hedging can do. Like, you don't know that that was going to happen out in advance, but the idea is that you're trying to lock in the rate that you're trying to get. Um, it's not trying to always make money. So tur turning to cash flow hedging to finish things up with, the portion of the gain or loss on the hedging instrument that is determined to be an effective hedge for pretty much everything, like, we're just going to assume that things are effective, but obviously in reality you've got to determine if it is effective and that's not always easy. If it is effective, you recognize it in OCI. Anything ineffective gets recognized in profit or loss. So. If a hedge of a forecast transaction subsequently results in a recognition of a financial asset or liability, the gain or loss in OCI can get recycled out of OCI into profit and loss. So a movement from OCI into profit and loss is called recycling. If it leads to a non-financial asset, like you're buying inventory, which is the example that we're looking at, the OCI gain or loss could be moved into profit and loss or it could be moved into the asset or liability that you're realizing. Uh, so to finish things up, we're going to flick over to the cash flow hedge. And I appreciate this is a, a long topic and you're doing, hopefully no one's brain's exploding quite yet, but we're nearly done. So it's the same information as above, except they've entered into the hedge before the purchase has happened. So the timing is different. So in this case, and the 1st of June. So the purchase of the inventory and the payment of the inventory and the financial year end, the underlying situation is exactly the same. You've purchased the inventory on the 15th of June. That's $1.21 million. You haven't paid it off yet. You pay it off in the future. That is exactly the same. So that's the underlying. The difference is instead of entering into the hedge at this date, you've entered into the hedge at this date. So you've entered into the hedge prior to the purchase. The settlement still happens on the same date. So the difference comes because the account payable, the foreign currency monetary item that we're dealing with, the account payable is on our books here and the fluctuations we already know are negative 30 and negative 80. So we know that that's happened in those periods of time, but there is no effect here because there's nothing happened. It is before the underlying transaction has taken place. Now, we, let's just assume we don't know the numbers yet. So we've got three blocks of time that we're dealing with in terms of the hedge. This time, just to 
we have something down here. So this is actually a fair value component. So this is fair value because there is an underlying, there is a recognized liability and that liability is fluctuates in fair value based on foreign currency risk. So that's fair value, that section. Ditto for this section because you have a recognized liability sitting there which fluctuates. So that's fair value. So that section is exact, like works the same as what we just did in terms of gains and losses in that period of time do go, are fair value hedges. So these do go through to profit and loss. The difference is this section in time because there is no transaction before this. I'm worried about it. It's like if I'm going, well, you know, talking about New Zealand a lot. I'm worried, I, not really, because I'm not going to spend a lot of money, but I'm worried about New Zealand going there because Australian dollar could crash between now and when I go. I've not spent a single dollar yet doing anything. I intend to spend some money, but if the New Zealand dollar suddenly jumps up against the Aussie, it means, for example, what would be, what New, what's New Zealand famous for? Rugby, hobbits, anything else? Sheep. Sheep. I might show a majority of my sheep and see if they let me in the country. Um, sheep, whitewater rafting down in Queensland, I don't know. There's, that's probably not been very fair in New Zealand. If there's any, <laughs> there's any Kiwis in the audience, I apologize. Um, but let's say I want to go, I have the intention of going over and buying a rugby jersey when I'm over there, which let's just say that's going to happen. At the moment, that would be the equivalent of $100 Aussie dollars now. If it turns out to be $120 by the time I get over there in terms of Aussie dollars, I've, I'm $20 worse off than I would have been, but I have no transaction that I'm showing the fact that I'm $20 worse off. I don't have an account payable for it. There's nothing there that's happened. But it does still affect me economically. So nothing happens here. Actually, how would I hedge that risk? How would I do, what's an easy way for me to do that? I don't know if I've already asked this question. I know I've asked it in a couple of classes. I'm not going to tell, let's say I don't do it through a derivative. What's a way that any one of us can hedge foreign currency risk? Prepay. Yeah, I, well, I could prepay. I could go down and change my money now. I could go down and travel X or HSBC and turn it and get some New Zealand dollars. Which means this section, because there's nothing here, this section is the cash flow hedge. This bit does not go through profit and loss. It goes through OCI. So you do not get a profit and loss effect because if you did, the whole point is these two kind of net out and you end up with very minimal effects. You have nothing happening down here in profit and loss. So if this went through profit and loss, you're actually generating an effect and that's not what you want. So you push it through OCI. <clears throat> in the interest of time, I will not go through the calculations, but they work much the same. But what you can see is At this period of time, there's no, effect, there's no transaction on the underlying and there's no transaction in the hedge because that's when you enter into it. And the hedge at that point in time is 1.3 to 1.3 gives you zero. Um, the receivable at this point in time, though again, have a look at the numbers to make sure you're comfortable with it. But the receivable is 1.25 and what you're paying is 1.3 because you've locked in 1.3. And it's a different locked in rate because you've done it earlier. 1.3, that gives you negative $50,000. So you're actually in a worse position by $50,000 because what you've locked in is paying $1.3 million Australian and what you're going to get is the equivalent of $1.25 million Australian. So you're actually not in a great place at this point. So you recognize a liability. So this is a financial liability and this is not profit and loss. That goes through OCI. So there's no profit effect then. Transaction is entered into on that date. So we've had the imagery here. This, because that's happened at the same date, we then recycle that reserve out. So OCI gains and losses can be included in the cost of the non-financial asset. You could also put it through to profit and loss if you really wanted to. But in this case, we're putting it to the inventory. So we credit the reserve. So that reserve disappears. And we debit inventory. And that gets 
in effect added to the cost of the inventory. And then the movements happen after this are exactly what we've seen before. We have a $30,000 gain, we have a $40,000 gain. <coughs> this works differently just because we weren't using 1.25 as a lock-in, we were using 1.3 as the rate that we locked in. So we're actually, in this case, only receiving $20,000. Um, but the important bit, I'll let you work through all that in your own time, the important bit is this for a cash flow hedge. You've entered into that arrangement prior to the underlying transaction, so you do not show profit and loss when that thing changes. The way you calculate the change is exactly the same. But instead of putting it through profit and loss, you put it through OCI. Just to stress, I'll say it again, you put it through OCI, not through profit and loss. After that, it works the same. Um, I'll leave that up. Um, so just in summary, while you're having a look at that, in a sense, we looked at why it's problematic. We looked at how to account for different types of financial instruments, or at least some of them. Um, we looked at derivatives, we looked at hedging, um, and we looked at different types of hedging. So it is an area where you need to spend a little bit of time, get to grips with how you work out the payable and, and receivable with this. If you can get to grips with that, the actual accounting becomes fairly straightforward.